taking Caltrain may soon get a bit more expensive. The train service is considering raising the price of a one-way ticket by 50 cents, and upping daily parking fees from $5 to $5.50. Clipper card tickets, monthly parking permits, and other passes would be increased proportionately. To understand why Caltrain is proposing these hikes, and the impacts they're likely to have, we need to explore two key numbers. The first is 64%. That's the portion of Caltrain's operating costs that are paid for by riders. And compared to other transit agencies around the country, that number is quite high. Most public transit services in the US are largely subsidized by taxpayers. Caltrain, however, doesn't have a dedicated source of taxpayer funding. Instead, it gets voluntary contributions from the transit agencies in the three counties it runs through along with some grants from the state and federal government. But these contributions only cover about 40% of the service's operating costs, and that makes Caltrain highly dependent on tickets and parking fees. We have uh, increased operating costs on the horizon every year uh, and some capital projects that are being implemented that are going to require even more maintenance needs. So in order to ensure that we have the funding available to be able to operate our system and provide the service that our customers have come to depend on, we need to explore increasing revenues from the fare box. Yet relying so heavily on fares makes Caltrain more expensive than other Bay Area transit options. Say you live near Diridon Station in San Jose, and you work in Palo Alto. If you take Caltrain today, before the fare hike, that trip will cost $5.25 if you buy a paper ticket. Switch to the 522 bus run by VTA, which does have dedicated tax funding, and you can get there for just $2. But while the trip takes 29 minutes on an express train, riding the bus takes more than twice as long. That brings us to the second key number. In 2013, the average Caltrain rider had a household income of $117,000 a year. The average VTA bus rider, meanwhile, earned just $39,000. For transit advocates, that disparity raises equity concerns. You might think, well, gee, that's because people with more money like riding the train and people with less money, well, I guess they just like buses better. But there's reason to believe that that is not the case, and people would prefer to have a fast and uh, relatively stress-free commute if it was cost accessible for them. Levin pointed to an informal survey of about 200 transit riders that her organization helped conduct. What we found was that people who reported that they got transit benefits such as the Go Pass were utilizing transit at a higher rate than people who do not get these benefits, and that these benefits are going disproportionately to higher income workers, and that is a structural inequity to the system. Levin suggested that Caltrain allow businesses near a station to pool together and sign up for the bulk discount GoPass program. That would allow small shops and restaurants to offer train passes to their cooks, waiters, and store clerks. If we had a way to provide similar benefits to lower income workers than to higher income workers, we would wound up with better equity, better environmental performance, um, and better economic opportunity for people who need it. Still, that wouldn't address Caltrain's reliance on money from riders and the need for these fare increases. In the long run, both Levin and Murphy agree that Caltrain needs its own base of tax revenue. Finding a dedicated source of funding that can uh, get us out of this situation where we depend on voluntary contributions and then our fare box is something that's absolutely necessary. However, Murphy added that it's hard to convince voters to raise taxes and complicated since the system runs through three different counties. Uh, we haven't found a silver bullet. The solution is probably a combination of different um, smaller uh, sources of funding. There isn't uh, a solution out there that's just waiting for us to implement. So for now, expect to see more fare hikes over the next few years. I'm Jeff Barrera for the Peninsula Press, a project of the Stanford Graduate Program in Journalism.